it's 11 o'clock. Thanks everybody for joining us. Um, today's presentation, our 15 minute Friday, is tips for creating reports with animations. I am Sue Dengenis, the Director of Marketing for Synchro, and the webinar today is being led by Amir Hamawi. Uh, many of you probably know Amir. For those of you who don't, Amir uh, works at, in our VDC group in the Berkeley office. Uh, he has a master's degree in mechanical engineering from USC, and uh, thanks all for joining us. Amir? Hello. Uh, as you said, my name is Amir Hamawi, and I'm just going to jump right in. So today we are going to, um, I'm going to go over creating um, a weekly report. So this is a sample of the report that we're going to try to create by 10 minutes. Um, up at the top, you've got a filtered look-ahead schedule, and then there's three different windows with different 3D sets and a cutting plane, and then there's a title block um, and the resource appearance profiles. So the first step that you're going to do is you're going to create a title block, and I'm not going to go over this step in detail because it's very project-specific, um, but the idea is, that in this case, I created a very basic title block out of Revit, um, and you guys can go ahead and create whatever title block you'd like. Um, but you want to save your title block as an image. I saved this as a, a JPEG image. And you want to save it for the size of the report that you're intending to produce. Um, so in this case, this is an uh, 11 by 17 um, format. And that means that the uh, at a 300 dots per inch um, resolution, the pixel size is going to be uh, 3300 by 5100. So that's step one. Okay, back to um, Synchro. So in this case, I've opened up just a pretty basic model. Um, this is our <coughs> residential model. And in order to kind of get the report set up, there's a few things you want to go over. So the first step um, is to create a two-week look ahead, which um, I think in this case, I'm going to go ahead and keep it a two-week look ahead. And for the two-week look ahead, you're going to want to enable um, the focus time and not the current time for the day to date. When you set that to the focus time, as you scroll through the timeline, it's going to filter um, the 3D objects. Well, no, it's going to show the, it's going to filter the timeline based on the tasks that are current for those two weeks. So you can see with without the filter, um, lots of tasks are listed, but with the filter, you've got the two-week look ahead. Um, the next step is to create your, your pop-out a few windows. So in this case, I'm going to have three different windows that I'm going to be working with today. And I'm going to set up three different sets. So in this first set, I'm going to create a cutting plane. And I'm just going to create a new cutting plane. Just call it new, it should be fine. Display the manipulator. Then for this view, I'm going to go ahead and not have the cutting plane enabled in this view. So I'm going to unselect the cutting plane in that view. Let me see. And then in this view here, I'm going to go ahead and add a, a specific filter. So I'm going to create a 3D set. And in this 3D set, it's going to be filtered by sele the selection system. So currently, I've got the filter set to two-week look ahead. So if I have my 3D set set to same as task filter, then this view is going to be filtered based on the current focus time. So you can see that in this view, the 3D objects that are shown are the objects that are currently being built at that point in time. You can also have another 3D set, so I'm going to add another one called Name Walls. And in this 3D set, I'm going to create a name, and I'm going to add the filter string walls. And so this view is only going to be showing um, the walls. So let's get 
let's just kind of move along and show, start to create the animation. So in this case, I'm going to create the animation. I'm going to call it report 11 by 17. And for this report, you're going to want to generate a timeline. So I'm going to bring up my animation editor. And if you right click and you do generate timeline, then you're going to be able to click on every week. For I'm going to do a weekly report every week. I'm going to start at zero seconds, and I'm going to step at one second. And I'm going to start my, my report on Monday. And I'm going to hit OK. And so what this has done is it's created a time step for every week for the full duration of the project, which in this case it's going to be out to, I believe it's 52 seconds. So now you're kind of ready to create the report. I'm going to go ahead and right click and hit export ABBI. And I'm going to change my width to 5100, which is the size of the image, and 3300. And I'm going to set the frame rate to 1, because I'm only going to be exporting out one report um, every second. So, and I'm going to go ahead and export it out as report, weekly report. And you want us to set it to export animation as a sequence of images. So this way you're not exporting out a video. Now for the content, I want to go ahead, and this, this it depends on the rep how your style of your report is going to look. But if I want to have it similar to the one that I had shown at the beginning, I'm just going to have three windows. I'm going to go ahead and add the Gantt chart. And for the image, you're going to go to the Images tab. You're going to browse for that title block. And you're going to hit Apply. And then when you go back to the content, um, the title block will be there. I'm going to push the title block to the bottom. And here's the title block. I just need to resize it. And as you, you can make adjustments to put your Gantt view kind of within the title block as desired. You can put the focus time down at the bottom. In this case, I'm not going to want the timeline. I'm going to unselect the timeline. But I will have my views. And I'm going to show my 3D legend as well. A couple more adjustments. So this this takes a little bit of time to set up, but once you've saved that animation, you won't have to repeat this step. It's kind of a one-time option. Um, you have additional options here that I'll just kind of mention. You can create textural frames. So if you want to add text, you can create text. You can add new frame and say caption, and then hit apply. And then this caption will be as part of the content. If I push it up to the top so that I can find it, you can have a caption. In this case, the font's pretty small, so I may want to adjust it later. But you can go ahead and add in captions. You have the same rendering options as you do within, um, as if you're going to create an animation. Um, but in this case, it looks like I've got my <clears throat> layout to kind of, uh, in at least an initial set to do a little bit of review. Um, I've got my correct size. I'm, got, I'm going to be exporting out one frame for the full duration of the park, the project to my report. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And as it's rendering out, I can go ahead and go to Windows Explorer. And you can see each individual report is being rendered out. And if I open it up and kind of step through, you can see that the Gantt chart is being 
displayed for the two-week look ahead at the top. And then you have your custom views. Now, the one thing I didn't kind of gloss over a little bit was that you can create viewpoints for each of these views. So if you want to return to your report and save these viewpoints, you can go ahead and create viewpoints. All right, so that's it. So I wonder if anyone has any questions. Okay, well, thank you everyone for joining us. Uh, we do have one more webinar next week, and uh, it's part two of P6 importing, and then we're going to take a break for the holidays. Uh, but hopefully you can join us next week, and uh, have a great weekend. Thanks, all. Thanks, Amir.